Hey everybody, it's David McKeever and Richard Hunley. We're with brokers with Advanced One McKeever Real Estate and welcome to our weekly Ask the Broker show where we give tips and we talk about real estate and we help agents succeed in their business. Uh, so this Friday, uh, this show today, we're going to talk about something a little bit different. Um, financial expert Susie Orman. You know Susie. <laughs> a lot of people yeah. know Susie. She's a... Uh, She's great. She has a long history. She's actually from the Bay Area, uh, matter of fact. Yeah, but I think so. She has a, a long history of uh, providing consumers uh, personal finance and just basically advice to help them, you know, grow in their their uh, success in personal finance. Um, but recently, she came out with something that I don't agree with at all, and. Um, most agents and realtors and anybody that's been in the business any length of time doesn't agree with. Right. Um, she actually recommended that right now is not a good time to buy a home. And people should wait until this pandemic is over to kind of see what's going to happen with real estate. So um, she had a she had a uh, article here that we'll throw up on the screen that says, let's just wait to see what happens. And uh, one of the main points in it is because of foreclosures. Uh, Richard, she thinks that there's going to be a huge amount of foreclosures like we saw in 2007, 8, 9, and 10. Well, I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, for one thing, there's the forbearance out there, so a lot of people are going to be saved by that. I think there's going to be a little confusion when there's been a, a pretty large percentage of people not making their payments. Now, were they covered under the forbearance or not? So there's going to be some confusion there. And then others probably didn't do the paperwork to get forgiven. And they might have to do that. But I'm sure the banks are going to be a little bit uh, forgiving. Let's call it on that one. So I don't think it's going to be near, near the run she says it is. Uh, is now a good time to buy a house? Yeah, I think so. Uh, what are the interest rates? Three? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a good time regardless. Yeah. So is it a good time to sell a house right now? Yeah, we're pretty high with the market. Uh, I don't know if you're going to stay local to replace that house is going to be a good trade-off. But if you're moving to another state, you're probably going to move with a pretty good amount of cash. So I'm not sure that I totally agree with her on that. I think there might be a way smaller scale than she's saying. Now, here's, here's the exact kind of quote in the article that I don't agree with. And she says, your neighbor's financial problems could affect your value. And this is how. She said, let's say, let's say you bought a house for 300000 and your next door neighbor is out of work due to the COVID crisis and it can't afford their payments. So they, can f they foreclosed on their home. She, f she goes on to further say, um, they foreclose on a home for 150000 and that's what the bank is going to sell it for. There goes the price of real estate. That's exactly what happened in 2007 and 2008. Well, if they owe 150 on the home, that's not what they sell it for. Believe that's me. That's not what, who sells it for? The bank. The bank. The bank does not sell it for 150 They sell it for whatever the market value is. Right. And I know that firsthand because the last time they had this rush, I was selling these homes for Bank of America. Mm. And what my job was, was to give them the value in today's market, and then they sold it for that. So, so don't, not don't be fooled. She, she's making the assumption that the bank's automatically going to resell it for whatever was on the loan. Yeah, whatever's owed. Absolutely. Whatever's owed. But it, the bank's not going to walk away from $100,000 in equity. Well, the bank if they use their insurance, the MIP and the PMI, they get that money given back to them because of the mortgage insurance. Mm. Then they turn around and sell the house for whatever it's worth. So sometimes, believe it or not, a bank makes more money by selling a foreclosure than they do by a regular sale on the market. Now, here's the other assumption that she makes is if the house is worth 300000 and the person has financial problems, and I understand there's going to be people that have financial problems, and they owe 150000 That means they have 150000 in equity. 
you know, any reasonable, intelligent person is not going to walk away from $150,000 in equity. I would get the sense that they're going to put that home on the market with an agent, with a realtor, yes. and sell the house at around market value before it even goes to foreclosure. You know, th there's people have so much equity in their homes now, whether it's 20, 30, 40, 50,000, they're going to sell or it more. or yeah. more. They're going to yeah. sell the house before they let it go back to a bank. That's right. I mean, if I told you you're about to lose your, you're telling me you're about to lose your house, I'd tell you it's worth, okay, let's say it drops some, 270,000. Mm -hmm. But you owe 150. Well, let's see, quick calculation, that's 120,000 or yep. after expenses, let's say 110,000. They're going to put back in their pocket. Who would walk away from that, David? You yeah. just said that. Nobody. Nobody. Unless they don't know any better, but they just need to give us a call and we'll let them know. Now, there is a small portion, and I have a chart for this, and hopefully I can find it. We'll put it up on the screen. I don't remember the exact stats, but it's very limited. There's probably less than 7 to 10 percent of all homeowners that are in forbearance have zero to no equity. Most of the people that are in forbearance right now have 10 percent yeah. and more of equity. So those are the folks who could be selling to uh, take advantage of it rather than just walking away. So yeah, unlike you said, and she's saying it'll be a repeat of 2007. 2007 was where we took a severe drop, and then people didn't have any equity in their homes. So yes, yeah. they were foreclosed on. This is not the same. Yeah. There is equity, thus a whole lot less foreclosures. Yeah. I, I, I don't agree with what she's saying here, yeah, at I least mean, not for our area. Yeah, exactly, not in our area. I think, it, I think she makes a lot of other sense in her other uh, advice and personal finance and whatnot, but I, I, think she's, I think she's dead wrong in this case, and yeah. um, I just don't think she's, maybe she just said it off the cuff and didn't do enough research on it. What do you think out there? Do you think that she's right? Uh, David and I don't. <laughs> we think that for our area, it's not gonna be as bad. There's, um, like we said, too much equity, too much uh, balance left over that they could get out of the house and put money in their pocket and not have that foreclosure on their record. So I don't think that's gonna happen. Yeah, and I also think that we learned a lot as a in, as an industry, I should say. The government learned a lot. The lenders learned a lot about the last time we had this financial crisis yeah. in 07 and 08 about how, how to hopefully prevent it from happening again. Now, history tends to sometimes repeat itself, but I, I think it's so fresh in our heads right now that I don't think it's gonna happen right this moment, maybe down the, down the, down the line maybe, but that's why they have these forbearance programs right now. Yeah. And so, you know, forgive them because they know there's equity there. If they do have to foreclose sometime, the bank's good with that equity. They know they're getting ahead of the game. So sellers, don't let the bank have that choice. You make that choice. That's right. Well, I appreciate everybody watching today's show about uh, us and uh, Susie Orman and our disagreements with her. <laughs> uh, if you guys have uh, any, any questions on that or comments, please comment down below. And uh, if you want to see more of our shows, it comes out every Friday. So please hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more of our Ask the Broker shows. I'm David and this is uh, Richard. We'll see you next time.